Hi, I'm Tinker Cavallero, and I've been gardening for, geez, since I was, oh, probably, oh, I'd say 50 years, and I'm going to teach you about seeds, grow, planting seeds, and we'll plant some potatoes, and I'm happy that you're interested in this stuff, because it'll bring you lots of joy and nourishment. So here is a calendula plant. You have the leaves and the stem, and down under the ground we'll have roots. Here's the flower. So the flower is going to get pollinated. This one probably by bees and other insects. And in that pollination, they'll make eventually some seeds. So here is that flower. Yeah, if this flower was a month later, two weeks in the summer, and it has its seeds on it. And inside here are the seeds that form from the pollen going down and here's the seeds okay this is a cardoon plant where it's a very it's the same plant kind of as an artichoke the relatives but you eat the stem and not the the seed head which is what you eat on an artichoke so here is this huge seed head and they grow really really tall and I'm gonna just take this one off and see if we can get down to the seed. It's, do you guys all know dandelions? They're kind of like a, a, here is the seed on the end of that. There's one right there. There's some more if I shake. There they are. See the seed down there? I'm pulling it apart. And, you know, it's, there's one it's moving around. There's one. So here is my seed cabinet, and I keep my seeds in it. Um, a lot of them I've collected myself, but seeds like will come in a package if I order them. Like here's some fennel seed because I like to grow fennel, and I put it in a plastic bag, and then I put it in here, and it's dark and closed. And then these are drawers of ones that I keep the seeds in, and I overflow. So. <laughs> So anyway, in there. It's pretty cold in here. Yeah, and it's cold in here, and it stays dark pretty much. Um, just a little bit of light hits it in the afternoon. And Tinker, why do we want it to be cold and dark? Because the seeds are want to be like they're, they're dormant, and they don't want, if you give them light, moisture, they might germinate, or they might over, they might, you know, go bad, basically. They might... It might destroy their um, vitality, that, which lives inside the seed. So um, what I'm going to start with to sow the seeds is in some soil. Now this is, I'm going to sow it in this big deep flat, though they're just little seeds. But I'm going to sow a lot across it. And the reason I want it deep is because leeks make a lot of roots and they want to go down and I want to have enough soil so that I don't have to move them until they're big enough that I can tell them apart from a grass seedling, you know, that they have some size. So I want there to be enough space for their roots. They're not easy to transplant because they're pretty spindly in the beginning. So I want them to be big enough and strong enough to transplant. So I'm going to do it in a, a deep pot like this. Otherwise you might just do it in a, a shallow pot or like here's some plastic pots, you know, like this that aren't very deep or, you know, not too deep and have sections or in a wooden flat. I have some wooden flats too that are just made from cedar. Um, so that's, you can make a pots out, pots out of anything. You can use old toilet paper rolls, cut them in hand and uh, thirds or so and just have them standing up with put a little bottom on it with some thick newspaper or something that because then you could just stick that right in the ground and then I use these for my tomato seedlings because they actually come out a lot easier and it just kind of because of the angle instead of being a cylinder 
it's just they're really easy to um, take the plant out of. I poke holes in the bottom though so that they'll drain. You have to remember that you want it to drain up. You don't want a solid bottom. And what do you write on the tag? I usually write the date and what I sewed and that's about it. And then I'll write down somewhere else that uh, I, I sewed my own seeds or, you know, or, mm -hmm. or seeds from Fedco or whatever seed company. Just so if it, something goes wrong, I know that I can go back to that seed source. Mm -hmm. The putty mix is, you know, you can buy it and they sell it at Henry's. I think they sell it at the grocery store too. And at, you know, the nurseries. And this one's one that I've used before and it seems to work fine. And it's usually got in it um, sifted compost and um, some other powdered nutrients they usually add and some uh, perlite or some of the white stuff that you see in it. Um, just keeps it aerated. And it's usually made in our, our part of the world, almost everywhere with a lot of wood products, sifted compost, so you can kind of see it. And peat sometimes they put in it, which I don't like using, but... Why don't you like using peat? Because peat is mined from bogs, wetlands, that we need to preserve and not dig out the peat. It's, and it takes centuries. I, don't, I forget how long it takes, but it takes a long time. So I'm gonna put, so I just, I already put some soil mix that I had left over in the bottom and I'm gonna put on top some more of this fresher stuff. I actually can make, you can make a soil mix if you want. Um, if you have compost and some good garden soil, you can sift those two together. I usually do a third of compost, a third soil or a little more soil depending on the soil and then put in sifted um, leaves or perlite or a combination of things that I'll add. So you're filling it up pretty full. I am, mm -hmm. mostly And you're tapping it down too? And I'm tapping it down, yes. Because yeah. so. I, I, you know, I was told that onions and leeks, they like a firm. The reason I'm doing this, I, th I believe with a lot of these soil mix is I firm it down and I make it kind of flat so that they're all at the same level when I cover it with the soil, well, I'm gonna cover it. And also if it's soft and bumpity bumpity, it, the seed will drop, they're little seeds, they'll drop down and some will go way deep and take a lot longer to germinate. Some will, you know, germinate, they'll be too close to the surface. So mm, I try so to make- So you want a nice flat surface. So I'm making a nice flat surface. Nice. Mm -hmm. So the, usually with a seed packet, they're, they, they have this kind of stick em stuff they use now. And so you want to open it on the side that's supposed to be open and it's bigger than, you know, it's usually pretty, you can tell. It's kind of like an envelope when you, if you get mail these days. You want to open it on the right side, it just makes everything easier. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just gonna see, here's the little leek seeds. And I'm just gonna put a few in my hand because they're little. Oh, I like this, see? Um, You can still see that there's the um, seed, outer seed part on some of them. Uh -huh. Yeah, because they're hard to clean to get that off. And I'm, I'm always happy when I see that it doesn't mean that it's been machine processed too much. Okay, I'm just going to scatter them on the top here. And they're dark, and so I can see them. But Sometimes you can't even tell where you've gone if they're this, if the seeds are the same color as the soil. But I'm just going to scatter them on top. Fairly close together, really. So it kind of looks like a... I don't uh, know how close to put them. Well, I'm trying to give... How do I know? I want the... It's, this is a seed flat, so I can put them fairly close because I know I'm going to... Um, transplant them, but I can't put them too close so that they're stressed out competing or they get weak because there's too many in one spot. So. Is there information on the packet that shows how close oh, it is? Oh yes, there is. And there's information. So, so like right down here, they say to plant a half inch deep, one half inch apart. It'll tell you, usually on the packet, on some seed packets, they'll tell you how many days till harvest. And this one says 75 days. Yeah. 
So it's good to know that seeds all take different times to germinate. And like one example is if you sow carrots outside and it can take two weeks, maybe three weeks. Sometimes if the soil is really nice and it's warm and the right temperature, maybe it only takes 10 days or a week or so, but generally you gotta wait two weeks. And you get, I know people get so anxious because you've done this planting and you're so excited and you wonder why aren't they germinating why aren't you germinating and it's just they take their time now I'm going to cover the seeds and I'm going to cover them about a quarter of an inch deep and I'm just going to use my hands and sort of sprinkle it so I try to keep getting it evenly evenly over it so here's the watering can I'm going to water these in just to settle them they need the water so first I'm going to water a little bit out and then over because I don't want this dribble part, or I don't want a big blop to come down. I want it to be really light and even spray, and that's what this, this little nozzle part has, tiny little holes. The first step, they don't need light. They just need warmth and water and the seed medium, whatever they're going to grow in. And then once they germinate, they need light. If they don't have light, they're gonna start moving towards some light. So they just, they need to find light. That's what they're gonna do. And that's what actually brings the leaf, the stem, and then those first two leaves up is that search for light. They, they know to go up because that's where the light is. So if you don't have a natural light, like in a greenhouse or you don't have a big enough windowsill, you can put a light above it, um, grow lights with the right um, frequency. So now we're not really done because we're going to, these are our, um, like our babies, we have to come and make sure they're watered, they don't dry out. So I like to look every day in this greenhouse to make sure they haven't dried out. And water them if they're dry, you know, on the top, on the surface. I don't want to overwater them though. So you know, if it still feels, I can even touch it and say, oh yeah, there's enough moisture in here. I don't need to water anymore. Um, I'll wait. I'll check again later today if it's sunny or tomorrow morning, you know. But you need to keep a regular eye on them. Here, um, about a week ago, I sow, just broadcast, it's a way of just scattering seeds in my greenhouse bed of arugula. And at this point, if you got close, it doesn't look like arugula. It, uh, it looks like um, these are the first leaves. They call them the cotyledons. And um, there's two of them that come up, and they're kind of like a heart. And you, this is the way all the things in the mustard family look when they first come up. Okay, so um, I've kind of dug, taken the weeds out of this bed, and I want to have a little area where I just have some lettuce that I can cut for salad. So I'm going to just, this is a mix of lettuces, and I'm just going to make the bed as nice and level, and I'm just kind of trying to get the big rock, bigger rocks out of the rocky soil. And then I think I'll do limes. I could just scatter the seeds, but I think I'll do some lines. The reason is um, I can see in a line that I, that's where that's the seedlings are. Um, because I know I have lots of weed seeds in this soil, because I let things go to seed, um, and you might have that same situation. It's, if it isn't a line, I know, oh, there's the lettuces. That's what they look like. And then when I'm going to cut also, it's just, I'll have a line and it'll be easy for me to just kind of cut, 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 and I don't have to go around. It'll be easier for me to weed when the weeds, if the weeds do come out, if it's in a line too. So that's why you see so many things grown in lines. Yes. I'm just going to make one line here. And I'm just using my finger because you don't really plant lettuce seeds very deep. So I'm just going to do the open the seed package. Some people will just shake it from the seed pack. 
That's one way to do it. We can show that, like you could just kind of get, see there's the seeds and I'm going to just pull them down. Yeah. Or I could do it, put it into my hand. And what's the advantage of putting it in your hand? Well, it's sometimes I can do a better job in my hand. I can squeeze them between my my thumb and my pointer finger and drop a feeler <laughs> if I was being more. I'm sewing them pretty thick because I'm going to cut them. Let's just show if I was going to um, you. Uh, I would like them to be more like that, but since I'm just going to cut, 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 I was sewing them pretty thick. But I'm going to try to do it a little bit less because I know I'll get it. They'll be so close together. We sometimes sew them thick and then we thin them as, yes. as we go and just eat, that's the other eat them way when they're do. small and then leave yeah. them to grow on. Do you exactly. ever do that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's another way. I usually actually do that. Yes. And now I'm just going to cover it and I'm just going to take my fingers and just kind of go like this. And you're covering it pretty lightly. Mm -hmm. Very lightly. Hard to tell in the video, but yeah. it's and only really about light. a quarter inch of, or about like a quarter of your thumbnail. Mm -hmm. Because this is not even spring, it's we're in February, and I, th I think it's going to rain tomorrow or tonight. I won't water it in, but if I notice that we, it doesn't rain and it, we have a dry spill, then I'll come back and water this. Here we have some potatoes that started to sprout, and I know this is an Austrian crescent, which is a nice potato, so I'm going to plant these. Um, the sprout has, has sprouted because they got light and it's time. They can't just stay. The starch inside this tuber, the potato, is starting to change. And it, you won't like the way it tastes after it starts to sprout too far along. You know, it starts to change more and more. So anyway, these are what we're going to plant and it'll be sitting there in the ground and these will shoot up and they'll actually make leaves or make the stem and the leaves and maybe then the roots come off from right there same spot and they drop down so here's the potatoes if you don't have garden space you can have if you had a pot like this or even, you know, something that you have to cut out the bottom, an old trash can. Anyway, the thing that I would do if I did have a pot is I would plant it down pretty deep <coughs> and then just cover it. And then because the potatoes form on top, they don't form down into the soil. They're actually a swollen part of the stem coming up to meet the sun. I would just plant them fairly deep and then keep adding soil and what they call hoeing them up or just propping them up with the soil mounding them up so that's that way you'll get you can get lots of potatoes in this pot okay, I only put one but you might put three but that might be too much maybe two in here so they'll grow and have nice green leaves and um, all through most of the summer maybe by Sometimes 4th of July, depending on how early you plant them. You could dig them up and they would be new potatoes. But I usually let, you know, sometimes I want some. I let the plant die back. So the plant dies back when it, it gets too cold for it. And then I'll, I'll, I'll dig them up because they're not going to get any bigger, too much bigger after that once the leaves are died back. So, so after it flowers missing. and the leaves die back, then yes. you eat the, then you can dig the potatoes, dig the potatoes. go on a hunt for your yeah. potatoes. Go on a nice hunt for the potatoes. Have you ever seen it where they just dump the pot out? Oh yeah, if it's in a pot, yeah. Yeah, you, dump you can just dump out. it out and look for the potatoes. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. I'm making this deeper trench so that I can use this soil to hoe it up. Just like we, we saw in the pots, we've just put more soil on top of the pot. And here, we'll just use our soil. So that's pretty good. Some people go way deep, but I found that then it takes a long time to come up. Plants take a long time to come up, and they sometimes 
rot down there depending on our weather. So then I'm just, it doesn't really matter. Some people, because there's two eyes on this, you could, let's say you, where the um, sprout came out is called an eye, but there's actually another eye right here. It's like you'll see a little spot divot um, in the potato. So I could cut this and put two potatoes in, but I have plenty of them, so I won't. I'm just gonna put a whole potato. So I'm just gonna put that in here. And then I'll put another one. I usually go about eight inches apart, 12 inches, something like that. And then I'm just gonna cover it uh, somewhat like this. So you don't dig all that soil, you don't put all that soil back all at once. You no. just put a little bit. I'm just gonna put a little bit and I'll keep this trench. So then as it comes up, I'll put more and more. And then I'll mound it up. Last year I used just a bale of straw and mounded up the higher part with a bale of straw. It worked really well.